welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our our last session before lunch, or as we're probably getting now, biscuits. Um, <laughs> uh, with me is Liam. Liam's going to be talking to us about podcasts, the secret weapon in the learning arsenal. So I'll um, I'll get off the screen because I'm really looking forward to this session uh, and hand over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Tom, for giving me the opportunity. And um, I don't know if it's just me in my headphones, but I can hear like a bit of repeat i don't know if that's just me i'm not getting any but um it may be <laughs> if you've got the stage open somewhere else it may be that you're getting it on there uh ah that would be why yeah no yeah thank you for your wizardry good uh, yeah i've got that like live solution. troubleshooting there that's what we like <laughs> 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 great stuff um yeah should have noticed that one but um hi everyone and um i mean before i say anything just thanks so much to tom uh for putting on this this great event um i'm learning loads and and i'm i'm sure that you are too um <clears throat> happy to take questions throughout um so so do drop them in in the chat if you do have any um and equally happy to answer any uh post if you're watching this on the replay like what i've been doing quite a lot um just a little bit of background on me uh, my name is liam liam gardner not any James Bond like character, but I'm an e-products manager and I work for a national training provider in the UK. Um, and one of my passions for the longest time, um, even before I got into the world of e-learning, has been podcasts and how they work. And and um, and I've been using them to learn quite a lot for uh, a very long time indeed. So I've built a couple of podcasts of my own, um, helped a few people build their own podcasts and even um, launch one through our company uh, for students to use. And I'm absolutely passionate about it, um, but I think there's a real huge opportunity for you to use it um, as a learning tool that perhaps is a little bit underestimated and a little bit underrated. Um, so let's go. And if you've got any questions, by all means, do drop them in as we talk through. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is what is a podcast? And sometimes, even though they have become so popular with the likes of Joe Rogan, Gary V, um, Serial, a, a whole vast range of really popular podcasts, some people are still a little bit unsure about what they are. And it used to annoy me to a, to a point because some marketers have got hold of the idea of a podcast and they've seen the, the power of repurposing it. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. And sometimes they actually forget to offer their conversation, which effectively is what it is, out there as a standalone podcast that I could go and listen to. And that's my go to format for uh, consuming information. Love videos, love all the interactive stuff. Not so fond of uh, reading large sections of text. I would I would much rather consume this in a listenable format. So um, if you are struggling to answer that question of how you define a podcast and what a podcast really is, then I wonder if you'd be surprised to hear and excuse the line um, formatting on the presentation. It's just kind of slightly aligned, uh, misaligned there, but it's a digital audio file um, that's made available on the internet for downloading to a computer or a mobile device. So effectively, it's an audio file that we transfer to somebody in a digital format. Um, so this is the definition taken by our trusted friend Google. Um, and I like to think of it as it being given us the ability to have our own mini radio show, our own audio book that we can share with people. And I think it's a superb um, format for us to have that engaging conversation with our listeners, with our learners, um, and it enables us to shoot, truly share the the way that we're trying to explain something through the power of voice and the, through the power of storytelling, um, which has been has got to be one of the oldest formats of us actually learning. So now we know what a podcast is. The question might come to mind of, well, I've heard of them and I know they're popular, but why are they so popular? Now, for me, I think. There's two big reasons for that, and that is because they're easy con to consume um, with, on the whole, podcast being free. Um, and not only that, but as humans, we like to do things effectively and efficiently. And the way that I use podcasts, and I'm sure many of you who are podcast listeners use podcasts, is to actually be doing other things 
whilst you're listening. So unlike the likes of video, um, unlike reading where you have to give your full attention, um, podcasting is a great format where you can be on your daily commute, you can be going for a run or even doing the dishes whilst you're still listening and learning and maybe even being entertained as well. So <laughs> it's a, a brilliant time saver in respect to we can still get some learning done um, whilst doing other tasks, hopefully still safely <laughs> at the same time. Um, but not only are they really easy to consume, literally um, having a connection to the internet and downloading that podcast episode um, to our device and plugging it into your ears or listening to it in loudspeaker mode. Um, but also they are relatively easy to create. And <laughs> I'm not saying that they're easy to create, but if you think in regards to the likes of video, where somebody might necessarily be uncomfortable on camera, you've got to think about the background, you've got to think about the lighting, and you have to think about the audio as well, because audio is a big part of um, video production too. You only have to focus on what is being said and the quality of audio that is being provided. Now, another feature and another great reason for us to create um, podcasts or audio content in this way um, to share it with our students is if it needs to be a perfect script, then an audio file is a lot easier to edit in comparison to a video. Yes, you can get away with some um, jump cuts or some other video editing that will help you to hide some of the mistakes that might be made or re-records to include an additional piece of information or something that was skipped over in the original. But in a podcast, it's quite easy to firstly deliver that information to the microphone via a script that you're reading where you're not worrying about presenting yourself on camera like I am now. But also you can cut out any ums and errs and any nervousness or miss sayings or if you just get tongue twisted like we sometimes do on occasion. Um, it's a fantastic way of us uh, being able to get that perfect script, um, which sometimes is really important, especially when we're creating some a piece of learning for some kind of compliance. So <clears throat> we've understood a little bit why they're popular, what they actually are, but why are they considered to be a powerful learning tool? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments if, if you are joining us live. Um, but here are some of my thoughts on this. And my thoughts compile of, of these things that you see on screen. So firstly, it's a huge opportunity for us to really gain the focus of people and really have that trusted attention that we can have with the podcast. So when people are listening, they're literally giving you the opportunity to be in their ears. You're on their shoulder telling them what it is that you have to say. Um, and this in itself is a huge trust builder. So if somebody's dedicated to listening to you for a long period of time, then it naturally allows you to build that level of trust and understanding with them. It also is brilliant for accessibility. When we're thinking about the way that we deliver our content, often we have to, well, it's important that we offer that level of accessibility for anyone who's gonna be consuming it. So for podcasters, perhaps people with poor visibility or just um, people who prefer a different learning method, um, it can really be a bonus. I don't know if about you, but I remember being at school and having to copy notes off of the board before it was rubbed out. And quite often I would lose where I was because the board got cleared and perhaps showing my age a little bit there. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sure that maybe you can relate to that too. But um, certainly I would opt for listening to something than reading long paragraphs of text if it's an available option. Um, we can also hold people's attention for a, a bit longer. And I know there's like kind of the idea of sc screen fatigue going around, especially with the way that the world has been over the last um, or the recent period. Um, they say that video content, you have to capture somebody's attention within the first four seconds. And whether, whether that's true or not, I think that podcasts allow us to have a little bit more leeway and a little bit more time that people will spend with us, especially if we think about the way that people consume them. Because if they're plugging in a podcast episode for them to listen to from hopefully for them to learn with and it's in their ears and they're going for a run or they're going on the commute they don't want to be messing about with changing the episode 
of podcasts that they're listening to, they're going to give you a certain period of time to actually make your point, which probably going to be a little bit longer than um, a standard YouTube video. Um, and not forgetting that some podcasts actually go on for three hours. So it is a medium that really can open up lots of opportunity for larger um, deep dive conversation. Um, and not forgetting, as I've mentioned earlier, podcasts can be downloaded onto a mobile device. Um, so if it is that you're trying to reach your audience or your learners, um, then it really can be something that reaches them at a time and place where they've got that opportunity to learn. So whether it be a lunch break, um, whether it be a commute, that person can opt to tune in for that small period of time, uh, plug their earphones in and really hone in on what it is that's being said. But how can we actually use this in the learning environment? So there's some examples of why I think it will be interesting for somebody to listen. But I think that we can bring learning to life with offering people that deeper knowledge, um, really going into a topic rather than giving somebody a high level understanding. Um, it allows us to immerse, invite our students to immerse themselves in what's actually being said. We can even have some debate. So we could have some um, conversations with a couple of people offering different uh, opinions, maybe some case studies where it questions the thinking behind what it is that we're trying to share. It can equally be used in stretch and challenge activities as well. So if your students have got to the end of what they need to know from a compliance point of view, we could add a podcast recording in there with some further learning, some further knowledge for them to take their understanding and uh, push themselves onto that next level. And not forgetting that um, <coughs> podcasts being an ideal format for long form can really open up the opportunity for case studies. I know that I watched a um, a session with Kath Ellis previously, if you're not aware of Kath, she's a fantastic learning technologist. Um, and she created uh, a whole learning package for somebody that was based around a podcast. So people had to listen to the information before they then come back onto the platform to answer the questions um, related to what it is that they had absorbed. So if it is that you're thinking, well, that sounds great, Liam, but how on earth do podcasts work and how would I get started with a podcast? Then I've got you covered here today. We need to think about four things. We need to think about the recording of the podcast. Um, so actually getting a microphone, sitting down and capturing what it is that you want to say. Not forgetting all that preparation where if you wanted to have um, specific facts, figures, research, or even a more scripted conversation, having all that prep work. Uh, that you would need to, to do before actually hitting record. But once we've hit record and we've captured that audio, then we would go through and edit our show. And that's something that um, some people don't worry about whatsoever. Um, some people um, like the likes of, I'll use Joe Rogan as he is, um, uh, he is a popular um, character to be talked about at the moment. Um, but his episodes go on for three hours and quite often he doesn't, cut anything so it could be if it's a really good conversation with lots of back and forth um, you might want to give it a proof listen but equally you might not need to touch anything at all however if it is that you want it to be absolutely perfect and to remove any of those nervous ums and errs then again it's quite to, to edit that down once we've edited our show uh, we then need to upload that into a location that is suitable for our podcast whether it be that we're sharing it on that wider scale or it, whether we're tying it down into that more lockdown environment where only specific students see it at an appropriate time. And then finally, we need to also promote it or tell people that it's there. There's um, no point um, trying to think that people are going to listen to it unless we actually tell them that a podcast is available for them to listen to. Now, if we're thinking about the recording in that kind of phase, and we're doing some preparation before we actually um, think about how to present a podcast to people, we want to think about how it is that we're going to record. So thinking about the show formats and in this particular world of podcasting, there's four main formats that I think would be suitable. So there's the solo episode where you've got literally 
the host of the podcast, um, either narrating um, a script or just talking to the listener um, on that individual basis. Probably the easiest way of capturing a conversation and, and recording a podcast episode. You've, of course, got a co-host environment where you've got two people talking about a particular topic with some back and forth. Again, uh, a really another popular medium, and it can open up a lot more conversation than just the singular narrative that's being heard. We can have a panel of people, so we can have multiple people all talking about a particular topic. And then also the storytelling format, where it's more of a documentary style, um, where you'd have certain sections, you'd have a narrator, and then you'd pull in certain um, different recording assets to create more of a, a popular like serial style show where you've got music, interviews, um, and you take people through that story. I realized I hadn't clicked my slide on, so <laughs> my graphic was lost for that one. Um, as well as that, we've also got um, recording considerations. So it's all well and good us thinking about actually capturing our recording, but it, we also want to offer somebody a really good listening experience. So instead of simply um, going off and recording on any device that you've got available, whether it's just the speaker on your laptop, whether it's uh, just your mobile phone in isolation, it's really important to, to consider these, these things. Um, <clears throat> the first thing to think of is the actual room that you're recording in. It may sound daft, um, but if you've ever gone into like a, a, a wide open space, I was once offered a recording environment in an office, which was beautifully clean and very minimalistic. But because of that, there was nothing on the wall. So the, the voice echoed around the room. So it made it a little bit tricky to listen to. Now, there are some editing techniques that you can minimize some echo, but at the recording phase, if you can reduce that as much as possible, um, that would be really handy. So considering the room choice, um, if you're a solo episode uh, or if you're capturing a solo uh, podcast, then one tip I've got for you is um, it might, might sound silly and might look silly if you've got anyone seeing, but actually recording in a wardrobe or a closet um, where you've got lots of um, hanging um, clothes actually helps to dampen the sound out so you get a really really good low budget sound booth um, at no cost pretty much also thinking about the environment in regards to it being quiet as well so another example of where we've recorded podcasts in the past have been where um, there's been lots of office traffic um, in the in just outside the door so i'm um, thinking about the time of day and thinking about the the room and what external noises might hear because if you have for example a dog barking in the background it's near on impossible to remove that um, distracting noise um, away from your professional sound recording um, you've also got the, the consideration of batch recording as well so wherever possible trying to make this um, this format as slick a process as possible and as easy for you to to put all the content together is thinking about recording multiple episodes at the same time. Um, much like you would do if you were writing the content or if you were creating videos. Um, so trying to record multiple recordings in that one session. Um, and trying to plan ahead, of course, with any scripts, prompts or questions to refer to, especially if you're interviewing somebody, um, it might take you a little bit off guard and, and you might go a little bit off subject. So having those um, pre-written and pre-prepared uh, is always a bonus. So if you are thinking about this and think it sounds great, but actually investing in a microphone isn't something we've got the budget for at the moment, then I've got a couple of recommendations that hopefully would be um, a good investment for you and to improve the level of audio quality that you've got. The first one is if you're just recording a solo podcast, um, then in truly Peter fashion, just a pair of smartphone headphones that you often get included with the smartphone um, and, a, and a phone itself with the, the voice note app on your phone does actually do quite a good job. Now, if it is that you're going to be recording into the laptop or to the computer, then equally a pair of smartphone headphones plugged into the computer itself 
does also do a really, really great job of you having a more professional sound. If you think about it, it makes sense because these companies have spent loads of money trying to get the best conversation transmitted for a phone call. So actually smartphone headphones are, are a really great asset. Now, if it is that you're um, looking to spend a little bit more of a budget that you've got, or you've got maybe one or more people speaking on a podcast, then uh, a microphone would be an ideal upgrade. Things to think about here are how you're going to plug this into your computer. There's no point buying a microphone that isn't suitable if you haven't got an audio interface. And what I'm talking about there is the level of connection. So some microphones are simply just a USB connection, which plugs straight into your laptop and you're good to go. Others require what they call an XLR connection, which is a different type of cable, which um, unless you've got a, a fancy machine um, <laughs> like uh, with an XLR connection already built in, then you're going to need an audio interface, which you would need to, to plug into it. Now, if you're a bit unsure about the level of investment that you want to make into a microphone, then there are there is a couple of microphones um, that I would recommend, and those being the Samsung Q2U, um, so that's Samsung Q2U, or the Audio Technica ATR2100. And the reason why I've mentioned both of these is because they're pretty much the same design, um, and the Samsung was more of a, a European model, um, the Audio Technica being more of an American one. Um, and the benefit of buying or opting for this microphone, if you're just dipping your toes into the water of um, getting a microphone equipment for podcasting, is that it's got both connections, so it can grow with you. So if you're simply plugging it into your computer, um, then it's fantastic because it has a USB connection, but it also has that ability to plug into an audio interface um, because it also has the um, XLR connections that can be plugged into one of those audio interfaces. Now, if it is that you're using uh, a USB connection, it might be that you're limited to only one capture of audio. So um, another reason for investing into something like an audio interface um, would be when you're capturing more than one voice at the same time. Technically, you could have two laptops running or you could have two smartphones running and two smartphone headphones or two microphones into the USB jack. But just to make it a lot simpler process, um, if you had got an audio interface, um, then you are able to you are able to sync up the microphones and, and it will be a lot easier for you on the edit on the other side. Um, not forgetting that if it is that we're um, if we're not wanting to to invest or to, to learn a new piece of technology, um, for the editing, which I'll come to on to in a second, that you have got programs such as Zoom, um, StreamYard, where they'll actually offer you an audio download of that conversation or that recording that has taken place too. Um, other things for you to think about is a pop filter or a windscreen. And you can see on the, the gentleman on the slide here, uh, on the end of his mic, it might not look uh, the most sexy. Um, but he's got a little windscreen cover, which is a little foam ball that you just pop over your mic microphone to reduce any plosive noises. And that's where you get sometimes the little popping noise for peas um, when you're talking naturally. Effectively, it's just where wind is hitting the microphone. But by putting this little inexpensive piece of um, piece of foam on top of your microphone or a circular disc with a bit of fabric in the middle, um, that will just help to protect your recording and to save you any headaches in the edit and any nasty sounds for, for your listeners if you're not going to go down the editing route. As well as pop filters and windshields, which are really relatively inexpensive, and they actually come with the Samsung and the Audio-Technica mics I've just mentioned. Um, it's also important to think about the headphones as well. So making sure you can hear back what is being said um, just to monitor whether you're coming in too loud on the recording or not loud enough, um, because it would be terrible for you to have um, recorded your episode when <laughs> it's not listenable. So that's some ideas for, for some equipment. Um, one thing I've forgotten to mention as well is having a Microsoft, uh, I don't know where I was going with that word, um, is a, a miniature stand. So um, making sure that microphone is elevated towards where it is that you're 
going to be speaking. Um, having the microphone position is also something to think about. So instead of it just being right up on top of the microphone where, where people sometimes lean in, it's actually recommended to have about um, about that distance away. It's a bit of a, a gnarly sign for you there, but having about that distance and trying to keep consistently that distance away. Now, where I was talking about the microphone arms, you can get some that are literally table stands that plug in and, and your microphone sit on top of it, or you can have some more professional arms um, like the one in the picture with this gentleman where it's um, hanging off the desk and, and able to be repositioned for you. Um, but again, something worth considering so you can get that microphone in a comfortable position where you're actually comfortable recording for potentially a long period of time. So moving on to from the actual um, equipment for capturing the audio, the editing options. Now, you can um, invest in some fancier, um, fancier solutions, but there's some great free options too, and that being Audacity and GarageBand or GarageBand, depending on how you say it. Um, GarageBand is going to be an option for you if you're on a Mac, and Audacity is free on both, I believe, but certainly for PC. Both will get help you get to that level of um, audio production that you need it to sound professional without having to incur any additional costs. The next um, topic can be something that you might not necessarily need to spend too much time worrying about. Now, this will be in relation to how you're going to be distributing your podcast. So once we've recorded our podcast, we've got it edited. We want to put it somewhere for somebody to consume. So if it is the the, the case that somebody um, wants to download your episode, they need to go to somewhere. Now, if you've got a website or an LMS or um, another learning management experience platform, where you can put your content or whether it's in a piece of rise um, e-learning then absolutely fantastic remember a podcast doesn't have to be out on apple or spotify or one of those big hosts um, then you can simply upload your episode in a suitable location and directing people to it but equally if you wanted to reach a larger audience if you've got a, a larger workforce that you want to release a more regular um, piece of listening audio then you could consider um, sites like Anchor, Libsyn, Buzzsprout, and they will help you um, to host your audio similar to what YouTube does with videos. Excuse me, two seconds. So those, those are um, three options, uh, Anchor, Libsyn, and, and Buzzsprout, are three professional options that you, you could use, and they are paid for services. Um, and that would allow you to distribute those to some of those um, podcast platforms if you wanted it to go wider scale. But what if you want it to just stay in-house or only be accessible to people who you define it to be accessible to? You want it to be a traditional podcast where somebody could go to a login and download just your episodes. Um, there is a solution out there. I'm sure there's more than just this one, but one that I found um, that um, is, is really, really useful. And that's from podcast.co. So podcast.co will allow you to upload your episode and upload a library of episodes to their platform. And then it will also enable you to restrict the access according to email address. So if it is that it's an internal, um, internal company podcast that you want to uh, disseminate the information that you want to out there, then you can stipulate that they have to have a company email address to access that content. Um, so great for you to treat it like a, a more a more public podcast, but still have that control on who it is that accesses it. So thinking about um, <clears throat> distribution then, most hosts um, will provide something called an RSS feed. Now, if it is that you're going for more of a public kind of advertisement about some of the courses that you're producing, you might want to publish it to the likes of Apple and Spotify. And, and they would provide you with all the details of how to link it up to those platforms. But just bear in mind that you need a host first that produces you this RSS feed um, that you could then go and link it up to the likes of Apple, Google and Spotify uh, podcasts. Equally. Um, these distribution sites do allow some other tools as well. So for the likes of Buzzsprout and many others, 
Um, you've got the ability to have an embeddable HTML player. So a simple line of code that you could then drop it into um, your, your learning platform of choice. Um, and it would have a little player that somebody could be on your platform without ever going anywhere else, just pressing play, and then they could hear the information that they desire to, to listen to. Again, this would be something that if you didn't want it to go public, um, just remember not to link it up to the Googles and Apples of the world um, and just making sure that it's only visible in, in that kind of way. Um, so we've got our distribution. And then it's thinking about how we advertise or how we repurpose our content into other mediums. Because I think one thing with podcasts is they are underrated for how much content that they can actually produce. If it is that you're having a conversation um, then and you're comfortable with it, you can put the camera on. And as I mentioned at the start of this episode, this episode, I'm thinking I'm in a podcast right now. Um, as I mentioned at the start of this uh, session, it can be that you record the audio and the video at the same time. So it actually creates two pieces of content to allow you to produce that for the various uh, learning methods that you want to, to use. It could be that you create something called a video teaser where it doesn't necessarily use the visuals, literally just the audio. Um, <clears throat> but similar to, I forget the lady who presented it, but similar to the first session that I watched where um, the graphic designer who was talking about Rise, do apologize for not remembering your name, um, but she used an audio WAV file uh, that went across the screen. And, and basically you can take that piece of audio, um, format it into the, the size and the shape of the image you want with After Effects um, and create an audio wave teaser. Um, so people can hear what's being said through a video, but it is literally just the images that are on the screen. And I've got a screenshot at the end um, actually of what one of those might look like. Not forgetting as well as the video content that you can produce, but also transcripts as well. So as you've spoken uh, about a particular topic, it could be that some people just don't like the idea of listening, which is absolutely fair enough. Um, so in that case, what you could do is you could um, either manually type it out or use a, a product like rev.com or Otto or, or various other options that are available. And you could actually create a written transcript of what has been said in those um, conversations that have been had. And as I said, uh, <laughs> I have got a... Just before you go on, Liam, yeah, sure. um, you just had a, a question come in there from Terry about what was the name of the last site mentioned for hosting that allowed control of access via email address? Uh, podcast.co. So um, it's, uh, yeah, podcast.co is the one for that. Um, I think transistorfm.fm. Um, would also have a, an option um, but podcast.co I have seen like a, a good demonstration of it um, actually in use so I can vouch fantastic. for that fantastic I'll drop a link into the uh, chat now fantastic I hope that's uh, answered that one for you um, so thinking about um, thinking about repurposing that content and as, as I mentioned video teasers are a really powerful uh, way of us doing this and as you can see, that there's a couple of icons here. You can make them as basic or as complicated as you want. So you could have just the, the static graphic and the WAV file, as you can see. Um, I haven't skipped on the presentation. Terrible. Um, but as you can see here, <laughs> instead of my um, interpretive dance description of it, um, you've got the little white bars at the bottom, which will move up and down. Um, you can either have a, a static image or you can use some little animations that you could put together. If you are using a platform like Buzzsprout, that actually comes with um, a an option for you to create these uh, quite simply and effectively. Equally, there's um, there's a site called Wave. I think it's .io, um, which again you can put your audio in, and it will create one of these um, sound bites for you with the the wave on an image or an icon. Um, so just some ideas there for you on some of that repurposing. Excuse me for um, muting for a second. 
And clearly I need to practice the pacing of what it is that I'm talking about because I've come to the, the end of, of what I've got to say. Um, so if you have got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, but otherwise, I, I do create some uh, content of, of my own. Uh, similar to the time I've got a YouTube channel. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn and, and I post um, not very much this year, but I am looking to post uh, a bit more. And then there's just a, a few examples of um, some of the podcasts that I've worked on uh, recently. Uh, the one on the right being one for the company that I I work with um, where we advertised for some traineeships. Um, so you're trying to communicate with some traineeships about the world of work. Um, so, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd welcome any questions. But otherwise, Tom, I think I've uh, I've just, uh, yeah, I've knocked me, knocked me speaking level up from one to one point two five, I reckon. Oh, I think it's a good bit higher than uh, one point two five. That was brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, so we do have, if anyone's got questions, um, do start popping them in the chat, but we do have one from, uh, I'm going to say Brianne and probably that's probably not your name at all. And I apologize. I'm famously terrible at names. Um, so do shout at me in a private message. Um, so I work in cyber, in the cybersecurity industry, uh, and a lot of the training we deliver is procedure based, focusing on how to identify threats. Do you have any tips on how I could produce or use podcasts to support this type of training? So, uh, I think a case study would be would be a fantastic idea. Um, I mean, you could have it. Um, I think the Kath Ellis one is very similar. I'll try and find I'll try and find a link for it and uh, drop it in the, the, the comments of the live room uh, later. Um, but basically what she did was she created her piece of e-learning. She had um, the scenario play out where um, it was. I think it was like some bribery that was going on, something like that. But they had they had like. Uh, almost like a documentary podcast where they had the scenario folding out and then they paused for you to just consider what might be going on, what what things could you identify. So potentially something like that. So it could be that like there's a scenario playing out, um, like a case study in, in that respect where um, you, you offer somebody something to listen to, which is perhaps a bit more interesting than just reading a, a dry piece of content. Um, you bring it to life a little bit and then you pause to ask them a question um with some of the the branching scenario rise demonstration that we saw earlier you could have depending on what they answer you could branch off into to various um various nuances of of what could happen depending on your reaction so you've spotted um you've spotted something uh, going on uh, with a potential threat what what uh what area do you, what action should you take depending on your action it could go horribly wrong and you know there'd be a, a an epic cybersecurity breach or it could be that you solve the problem and then you're congratulated for taking the right piece of action so it could could work in that way i suppose yeah i suppose in this sense that like this used to be i, I think it's weird it used to be more common before kind of the audio went digital i remember completing distance courses where you were sent sent sets of tapes and yeah. you would listen to the instructor and go off and do it it's, it's actually how i learned to use excel uh, which was it's a weird combination of very old technology <laughs> and very new technology at the time um but you would every week you would get a tape delivered and that would be your recorded lesson you'd follow along with it um so i suppose there's there's really no limit to what you could use podcasting for um i suppose as long as there's some kind of narrative or story or next step then it can be a a conversation basically yeah Absolutely, Tom. I think from what you said there as well, just leading on from that is that you don't have to deliver all of the content at once as well. So if it is a large piece of information, similar to how you'd lock a module, you could just simply release a podcast episode a week and and it being released in, in that kind of way. So it doesn't overwhelm the student with like a three hour recording. You could create three hours worth of content, but just release it in 10 minute segments over those months or those weeks. Uh, that go through so I think yeah great shout on that and I guess that would be a great way as well to kind of secure engagement on a, a like an LXP platform getting people to tune in for this week's episode and you could even then use it almost to each podcast as kind of a kickoff for further activity rather than just going well that's it that's the learning experience done absolutely and, and if we think about like um, peer learning as well so we could have a podcast episode that everyone listens to 
and then open up a discussion about it like what did you think what are the issues here what what kind of solutions would be found um so it could be like instead of it just being a pdf to that people review it could be a listening experience that that people have and i i, I really think that bringing something like a, a case study pdf that everyone would study normally if we had that as a discussion piece um that would be a really powerful way of doing it and not forgetting that you know who has in most parts of the world we're lucky enough to have a smartphone so it could be that we even offer it out to getting our students to recording something of their own and then having their question maybe answered or their opinion brought through and then that's that's part of the episode for the next week and then we can kind of analyze it um in that kind of peer review way awesome yeah i think there's so much potential here and i'm not just saying that because tomorrow you've got my session on audio production uh but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but there really is i think we, we were talking before the session and i think it's a bit of an untapped potential where the l d industry we produce a lot of podcasts about l d like the, you, you only have to throw a rock and you'll hit six of us basically talking about something <laughs> learning related out there um but then you you ask that question so how are we using this for learners and it's kind of like a tool that we're spending a lot of time to get good at and then not utilizing where it really matters um so i think this session was fantastic for exactly that um so uh we're we're coming up on the end of uh this session time so well if there are any last minute questions now now is the time um I mean, I'm sure if you get in touch with Liam after the fact, he'll happily talk to you. But yeah, uh, <laughs> not a problem. But um, yeah, and obviously all the details as always on the speaker card. Um, we are now heading into a, our break for today. Uh, so our next session is at 2.15 this afternoon, UK time, uh, where we'll be hearing about using project management uh, to be a better communicator and instructional designer. Um during this break, uh, you, please feel free to utilize the sessions areas. We had a great conversation in there yesterday um, about sort of uh, just a real good back and forth about transitioning from the sort of academic world into ID, um, other bits and bobs, different softwares. Um, I'll be around for a fair bit there. Do use the networking area as well. Uh, make some new contacts. And of course, make sure you do actually have some lunch and biscuits and coffee and tea and things like that. Um, so thank you all once again. And we shall see you this afternoon. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye.